your name? Okay, my name is Anne Kettenbrink, A-N-N-E-K-E-T-T-E-N-B-R-I-N-K. Okay, how old are you? 31. You've been Dick's daughter for 31 years. 31 years. years. <laughs> Do you remember, what are some of your early memories of when, when you can remember that your dad was, you know, a TV guy, that people knew your dad, <laughs> and you didn't know why? Probably as early as I can remember. Um, we used to, we, when we go out to eat, people will stop and say, hi, how are you? And he'd have a conversation, and I'd say, do you know them when they would leave? And he'd say, no, I don't know them, or I kind of know them. And people just, you know, want to say hi, and oh, you're a celebrity, and that was just normal the way we grew up, so <laughs> we didn't know any different. We went to school, and people would be like, oh, your dad is famous. Like, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> He's still goofy at home, so. Let's talk about his goofiness, because he is a goofy guy. I think everyone who has worked with him on live television would say he's a goofy guy. He's he, a goofy dad, he's, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, when we were little, he used to tell us that Santa Claus had died before Christmas. And his favorite story is uh, a joke that he played on my brother. When my brother was in kindergarten or first grade, the lunch menu came out on a piece of paper back then. So Andy was really excited that it was going to be chicken strips day or something, and he was looking forward to it. And my dad cut out a different fish sticks day or something, pasted it on top, made a new copy, and Andy's like, it's chicken Where's the fish, fish sticks? <laughs> and and so he's funny. so proud that he fooled a first grader. <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah, I mean, he's just been goofy like that forever. I, I'm actually surprised that's a story I haven't heard before. <laughs> I can't believe he didn't tell you. Uh, maybe I just because I'm sure he tells the he same tells stories over and over. What good stories. Yeah. What are some of your favorite stories that he's told from KRCG? Do you remember any stories? <sighs> well, I think my favorite of all is when he hit the camera, which I know is on YouTube. <laughs> and I wasn't here. I was living in Joplin at the time. And he said, I'm on YouTube. And I'm, what did you do to get on YouTube? And he said, well, the camera wasn't working. And so at the end, I got up off the desk, and I just smacked it. And I'm, well, that sounds like you. <laughs> That's funny. Speaking of YouTube, so Dick now has a Twitter account, which mm -hmm. was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about your dad becoming so social media um, savvy? I, it's shocking, frankly. <laughs> um, I think that he enjoys it, though. I know that he kind of grumbled at first about getting a Facebook page, but he, he loves, loves it. it. Yeah, he because he gets to interact with people yeah. and talk to people, and he really likes that. Do you follow him on Twitter? I do. Does he have any good tweets ever? I, do you, I hardly ever get on Twitter, so he's probably on Twitter more than I am, which is kind of sad. <laughs> I heard that you said something. What, did you have a tweet, or did you say something about him learning the basics of Oh, yeah, because my they were trying to set it up, and so my mom called me and said, you have Twitter, don't you? And I'm like, yeah. So she's like, can you help us? So I'm trying to help them set up a Twitter over the phone. <laughs> and so I did tweet. I tweeted something about Dick Preston tweeting, and it's a big day. <laughs> there you go. So. Um, what do you think about, are you proud of your dad? I am. I, I'm very proud to be his daughter, and he obviously had an influence on me because I work in journalism now and my mom has a degree in journalism too so between the two of them I'm sure that's where I got it from but you know he's he's fun and I like hanging out with him and I got a big part of my personality from him so I don't know if that's good or bad <laughs> but I guess it depends on if you like goofy or not. What other traits besides goofy do you think that he kind of passed on to you and your brother Andy? Um, I think that we definitely, he, he cares about talking to people and he's personable um, and I enjoy meeting new people and finding out new things and I think that's a big part of his job and my job and you know just getting to know new things and have a new curiosity about things mm -hmm. and he also is a big um, grammar person. Yeah. <laughs> Which my mom is too, but and I think all of us in our family are very strict grammarians. So several so you know the <laughs> big words. Yeah. You are and yours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know where that apostrophe goes. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, what, um, what was I going to say? Something about his stories. Oh, all of his different hours. When you, what hours did he work when you were um, growing up, like at home? Was it? You know, did you guys mm -hmm. have to kind of 
go with the flow with his different hours? Yeah, um, when I was little in elementary school, he and most of most of school actually, he worked in the 10 o'clock news. So he would be home when we were at school and then he would be gone when we got home and we wouldn't see him. I remember in middle school, I used to tell him goodbye in the morning, he was sleeping and I'd say, I love you, see you tomorrow, bye. And we maybe talked to him on the phone and we didn't see him till the weekend. And that was his schedule for, for a long time, was the night news. Was that hard? Yeah, it was. And it was really hard on my mom because she didn't have anybody to help her. You know, we, you have two kids and you're driving to dance class and Boy Scouts and all that stuff. And he didn't get to go to a lot of, you know, performances or stuff like that that was during the week. But I think the schedule he has now is strange because he has to get up so early <laughs> before, yeah. yeah yeah but he really enjoys being on the morning news because he gets to be more he gets to show more of his personality you know i mean you really get to know who he is instead of he's doing these stories and you learn about these people out in the community you can see how terrible his jokes are <laughs> and how silly he can be and i think he really likes that yeah he definitely shines he's shined in all of his news positions mm -hmm. I think he really, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you just had like a quick little either congratulation or a quick little message for him, what would you say if you okay. were listening to this? I'd say, hi, happy anniversary. <laughs> Thanks for being a fun dad and for being a journalism um, inspiration. And um, here's to another 45 years. And maybe for the next 45, you can get some new jokes. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Anything else you want to say? No, that's it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Something that uh, we don't know, but we must know. Oh, that's good. Or hasn't told us everything. Hasn't told us about. Oh. Um, he likes music a lot. He does. Well, I'm sure everybody knows that he likes Frank Sinatra. I mean, that's yeah, not a secret at all. Know that. Um, how many albums does he have, do you think? Uh, he has walls. I mean, he, there's, there's an entire wall of our family room that is nearly all Frank Sinatra albums and classic music from that era. And then once he started collecting CDs, all the albums are now on CD, so he has an album and a CD. He's got all. <laughs> he has them all, yeah. Can I touch them? I guess you can touch them. <laughs> I, I'm, sure, I'm sure he would share them with you, but you better give it back. <laughs> I can't think, I mean, he's like me, but just, just, just maybe. He was a Boy Scout. I know he was a Boy Scout, but I'm not sure about Eagle Scout. I mean, he, he pretty much, you know, says everything that comes to his mind, so he doesn't have many secrets. Yeah. Okay. Does he ever get mad? Oh, yeah, he gets mad. <laughs> Yes, he does. He does get mad. Um, usually, he doesn't get too flustered, but when he does, it's like an explosion. <laughs> Watch out! Watch out! Yeah, which which explains why he hit the camera. <laughs> he recovers quickly, though. Yeah. He gets over. Yeah, it. that's that's you punch a wall and then you're done. Which he never punched a wall, but I did lose I did lose some baby doll furniture down the stairs. <laughs> his pet peeves. Well, bad grammar. Um, Bad language, even though sometimes he uses it himself, <laughs> um, which is unfortunate for me because I use bad language all the time. What else? People bothering him while he's watching the Cardinals game. He is a big Cardinals fan. That's probably pretty much it. He doesn't like when he watches bad movies. He gets mad. Yeah. He bad Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Made, yeah. Made him watch it. Well, now is that really bad, or is it just that she liked it and he, and he didn't? didn't. That's probably, yeah, it's more bad. <laughs> he's really—you may not know this. Th this may be something. He's so into black and white movies or old movies. I mean, he's really about the '40s and the '50s in that era as well. You know, Frank Sinatra, and he loves the movies. And he always pesters me and Andy when. Andy lived here. Let's watch this movie. Let's watch it. But it's not any movie. It has to be a movie that he picks out that is 95% of the time black and white, and we have no interest in it at all. <laughs> he tried to make me watch Adam's Rib for about a year. Let's watch Adam's Rib. Let's watch Adam's Rib. So uh, finally, I gave it a new name, Adam's Effing Rib. 
I don't want to watch Adam's effing room. <laughs> but I finally did, and it was funny, so. Mm-hmm. My all-time favorite movie. Yeah, I mean, they're good movies, but it's just that he's it's, so persistent about yeah. it. Yeah. That's a good one. Anything else? Does he ever cry? Does he ever cry? Yeah, he d- not very often. Um, he cried when his dad died, I remember, because I think that was probably one of the first times I saw him cry. And I kind of was like, oh, wow, you know, like, that's different. And he did, when he was having health problems, you know, that was... It was different to see him, you know, a little bit beaten down and not as strong as usual. But it, he did when he had his heart attack. Um, a year ago. Yeah, almost, exactly a, almost a, yeah, almost ago. exactly a year ago. Um, he had good spirits the whole time because it what he it wasn't that bad, luckily. And I went um, when they went to the hospital and he was making jokes, you know, oh, you can have my Frank Sinatra albums, and <laughs> like that's not really funny, but we got to the hospital room, and the little urine container that they have, he put water in it, and he was drinking out of it. <laughs> yes, so you know that it's probably not too bad if you're drinking out of the urine container. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you so much for coming Thank by. you. Okay. Good. okay. Well, you've come a long way, baby. No, you haven't. 45 years at the same place? Wow. Dick, all my best. I do mean this, that I really enjoyed the three years I got to spend working with you every day. It was always a blast to come in and uh, hear those stories that you would tell about how things were in the old days. So I hope uh, that this means another long stint for you and uh, best wishes. Uh, gosh, I guess I'm sure everybody's talked about his Sinatra uh, love, and uh, let's see. Well, there's so many other things. If I did, I think it'd be, uh, you know, probably grounds for the uh, sheriff's department to come out and place him in cuffs, but uh, we won't go there. I, I, you've been here for 45 years. Let's keep it, you know, out of, uh, you know, the behind the bars scene, okay? Take care, my friend. Okay, so I'm supposed to say something pithy, yes. like um, back when I came here in 1982, you, you were one of the first people who welcomed me and made me feel comfortable. Uh, there were a couple of times when we had battles over stories when I was the assignment editor, and then when I went out in the field as a reporter, uh, you helped make sure that I knew how to use a camera and how to write and edit for TV. So. I guess I'm glad you're still around, and thank you for all the help you gave me back in my TV days. Okay, can you tell a little secret you can share with us? Um, or remind us of something bad or funny? Well, yeah, the one secret probably is I got really hoarse a couple of times and couldn't talk, and I still went and did a whole day's work out in the field, and then came back and wrote the stories, and Dick voiced them as though he had done the work. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. He didn't not take a pay for this. (laughs) Pardon? He didn't not steal your pay for this, for doing this, no? Eh, nah. All right. Okay, thank you, then. Dick Preston, I just wanted to wish you a very Happy 45th anniversary. Sarah Hill from the Veterans United Network. It's been many years since I worked with you, Dick, but I wanted you to know that I'm thinking about you on this day and every day and how all of the memories that you provided me made me smile. Dick used to reach across the news set during a live newscast and lower my chair live while we were on the air and I'd almost fall on the ground. Before every newscast, he would sing There's Trouble in River City from the Music Man. He knew all of the words and he would sing it and he would always put me in a great mood. Uh, Dick also liked to fake heart attacks for some of our interns. He would hold his breath until he turned blue, and then he would go up to them um, and ask them to call an ambulance, and the look on their face was was priceless. You had a very interesting sense of humor, Dick Preston, and I know you still have that great sense of humor. I wish you well. Happy 45th anniversary. One place at that TV station, that is impressive. The Missouri is lucky to have you in their living rooms. I'm lucky to have had you as a friend. See you later. Happy 45th. 
Happy anniversary, Dick! I can't believe it's been 45 years. I'm so happy for you. I remember when you celebrated the 40th anniversary and you made that awesome photo with the ruby. 45 years, you should be so proud. I know everyone loves you there. I love you so much. I miss you so much. One of my favorite memories is when the camera was shaking during that one new newscast and you went up and you hit it back to normal. I think that was legendary. It still makes me laugh to this day. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day. Enjoy the celebration. Miss you. I just want to say congratulations to Dick Preston. 45 years at KRCG. And I got to say, that man was one of the biggest influences on my career. If it wasn't for him, I don't think I would still be doing this today. Uh, Dick was probably, and still is, one of the funniest people I know, even though he would tell the same jokes over and over again, and he really knows how to get people comfortable and just really bring out the best of them, um, and that's a reflection of his personality. So, Dick, again, I want to say congratulations. You're the bomb, you're the best, you're awesome, and I really wish you the best. And by the way, I finally now drink coffee after all these years. I just couldn't take it uh, getting up so early, and I know you know what that's like. So thanks again, Dick, for helping me out and being just such an amazing guy. It's a blessing to know you, and uh, best of luck to you going forward. Well, hello. Greetings from Central Florida. Dick Preston, a little bird, told me that it's been 45 years for you now at KRCG. And uh, thinking back, that would put me at, um, we won't talk about how old I was when you started there, but I wanted to say congratulations on 45 years. And just some little advice, just remember to ta kind of flip off that microphone if you ever take off, head to the restroom, or even to go grab a donut during some of those cut-ins. Congratulations, Dick. Uh, I'll talk with you soon. Oh, hi. You caught me in the middle of my usual morning routine, drinking a couple bottles of wine and watching my last show on KRCG. Dick and I were co-anchors together for several years, and I thought it was only fitting to be in my bathrobe on this 45th anniversary tribute, just as he was on our last show together. Dick, congratulations to 45 years. I'm surprised they haven't fired you yet. <laughs>